Okay, let's, let's take a look at uh, actually graphing the, the various terms that appeared in our dB magnitude response. The simplest term we had was 20 log of product and ratio of number of constants in any particular case, but um, this term is not a function of omega. So um, I can evaluate this on uh, my calculator fairly easily, but uh, since it's not a function of omega, it, it's just going to be a constant um, over all values of omega. Um, the next term I want to look at is a pole zero term that's at the origin. Uh, we had a pole term that was uh, uh, at s equal to zero, uh, so this became, since it was a pull term, we were subtracting a term like 20 log of the absolute value of j omega, or this is more simply, the absolute value of j omega is just omega, 20 log of omega. Um, this is a nonlinear term. It's, it's simpler to actually plot this as a function of u equal log of omega and lay out a u-axis, sorry, a, a u-axis here. I'll have 0, 1, 2, 3, and then the corresponding, actually, uh, omega axis. Um, this, this would actually be 1, log of 1 is 0. Uh, this would actually be 10. This would be 100 or 10 squared. This is 1,000 or 10 cubed. And similarly, on continue on my u values, minus 1 actually would correspond to 10 to the minus 1 or 1 tenth. And then similarly, minus 2 would be 1 one hundredth. Notice as I continue to the left here in u values, uh, get more ne negative in u values. Omega value, omega never gets to zero. I just get closer and closer, one tenth, one hundredth, one thousandth, um, one ten thousandth, and and so on and so forth. Um, fortunately, you can you can uh, get special graph paper that already has this axis laid off for you here, where equal distances now correspond to um, uh, factors of ten in omega. It's called semi semi log x paper. Because the x axis is is laid out uh, logarithmically, um, and uh, and this equal distance here of one unit in u corresponding to a factor of ten in omega that that's called a decade. So uh, again, a decade above ten is one hundred. A decade above two is actually 200, a decade above 200 is 2,000, and, and so on and so forth. But on this special semi-log paper that's um, usually, again, the, the horizontal axis won't be labeled, you'll pick your, your uh, starting frequency, and it's, it's some power of 10, um, you know, 1, 10, 100, depending on the frequency range you want to make the graph over, uh, you'd lay that out. And then, now in, in this case, we're plotting 20 log of u. Uh, so in that case, uh, 20 log of 0 is right here. 20 log when u is equal to 1, or 20 log of omega equal 10 is 20. 20 log of omega equal to 100 is going to be log of 100 is 2. So 20 times that, that would be 40. So this is plus 20, plus 40. like this. This would continue on forever. At, at 100, it's going to be 60. What we have here for this term is uh, it's an increase of 20 dB per decade. Every decade we go up in frequency. Our magnitude response, we're now plotting in dB. 
20 log um, goes up by 20 dB for every decade we go up in frequency. This would continue to the left here as well. So, um, so at omega equal minus 1, I'm sorry, u equal minus 1, omega equal to 1 tenth, the log of 1 tenth is minus 1, uh, 20 times that would be minus 20, and then minus 40, and so on and so forth. So a graph of a term like this, and it's just a straight line, um, goes through omega equal 1, or u equal to 0, and increases uh, as we move to the right, uh, 20 log um, at, at a rate of 20 dB per decade. Now, ours was a denominator term, so we're, we, we're subtracting it. So I sketched here 20 plus 20 log of omega. Minus 20 log of omega would be a line that actually is, is decreasing at a rate of, of uh, 20 dB per decade. Let's take a look at the next term. Um, this is a first order or zero and uh, these terms look like this 20 log of 1 plus j omega over a okay. and we had some denominator terms that were similar that I wrote in in, um, uh, in terms of B instead of a um, in this Bode method we approximate this as zero for um, values of omega less than a. So this is an approximation. It turns out to be a relatively good one. You can see here for values of omega less than a, this term is small compared to 1. The log of 1 is 0. On the other hand, for values of omega greater than a, we'll approximate this. We'll assume that this imaginary term is much greater than the real term. And so this simplifies to just the magnitude of uh, j omega a, or magnitude of j omega a is just omega over a. And if we graph this again on semilog paper here, um, let's say 10, 100, 1,000, and so on and so forth. Uh, I'm, let's assume that A is is at the point right here between 10 and 100. Um, so if I were graphing 20 log of 1 plus j omega over A, uh, the, in this approximation method, for all values of omega less than A, I assume that this is equal to 0. And then for values of omega greater than A, I, I'm going to draw a line, since I'm on this log omega axis, and it turns out here that uh, at omega equal to a, we've got the log of 1 or 0, that's right here, okay, for um, a frequency that's 10 times, of, uh, 10 times a, when omega is equal to 10 times a, that would be this point right here. You know, a decade above a is, again, this equal distance above a, but at this frequency, where omega is 10 times a, the log of 10 is, is 1, and then so I, I'm increasing by 20 dB, and then uh, two decades above a, I'm going to be uh, log of, uh, that ratio would be 100, that's 2, I'm going to be at 40 dB, so again I have this straight line that goes up at plus 20 dB per decade. For, for a denominator term, I would actually be decreasing uh, for all frequencies above A. And so again, notice the slight difference between this and, and just the, the magnitude response in dB for a simple polar zero, which was a straight line over all frequencies. Here I'm zero for frequencies less than this uh, uh, A term, and then I'm increasing at 20 dB per decade um, at frequencies above that. Um, and this is an approximation. Uh, the actual gain at omega equal a is not zero as the graph would indicate. Um, and 
uh, I can find the, the actual gain at, at A would be when omega is equal to A, I'm going to have 1 plus J1 or 20 log that magnitude is the square root of the sum of the squares or 20 log of the square root of 2. If you evaluate this on your calculator, it turns out to be approximately 3. Okay. So the correction here This is 20, so actually at omega equal to A, my gain is instead of being 0, the magnitude response is actually 3. If this is 20, decade above, and so 3 is going to be right here. So the actual graph would look you know, like more like this. But the, our straight line approximation above gives us a very good approximation to what the, what the actual magnitude response uh, would look like. So let's take a look at, at the, our final term. That's a, a second order whole was when our example was in our example, but we might also have a second order zero. And the, the standard form for uh, a second order term and, and we're doing our Bode plots is one plus j omega uh, b2 over b3 plus j omega squared over b3. So um, you, you can, this is typically written slightly differently in the control system literature. Uh, I can write this as 1 plus j. I define this, this new variable uh, zeta omega over omega n. So now this zeta over omega n would actually be uh, b2 over uh, b3. Actually, b3 will become uh, omega n squared, and uh, zeta, uh, 2 zeta will actually be equal to um, uh, b2. And then this last term is written as j omega squared over omega n squared. So and omega n squared is, is going to be equal to b3. Omega n will be the square root of b3. And then 2 zeta over omega n will be equal to b2 over b3. So um, I, I end up with these definitions. Omega n is the square root of b3. This, this is called the, the resonant frequency in the literature. And then solving for zeta, it's 1 half b2 over the square root of b3. It's known as the, the damping factor. So again, that's just some uh, terminology you'll run into later on in your controls class. Uh, so what I'm trying to graph now in my magnitude response in db is using this new notation, zeta omega over omega n plus j omega um, squared over omega n squared. Uh, in my approximation, again, I assume that this is zero for values of omega less than omega n. Okay. So again, I'm es essentially ignoring these last two terms and assuming this simplifies to just one. I have 20 log of one or zero for omega values less than omega n. For omega greater than omega n, assume this, this simplifies to 20 log of just the most significant term here, uh, j omega squared over uh, omega n squared. The absolute value of that would be uh, omega squared over omega n squared. And this, this is the assumption I make for omega greater than omega n. I can actually pull the squares out here and this, this is equal to 40 log of omega over omega n for omega greater than um, omega n. And so uh, this looks similar to the term we, we just did uh, except we had 20 log. So for a second order term I'm actually going to get an increase of 
40 dB per decade instead of 20 dB per decade. So in my magnitude response, this is omega, and I have equal distances here indicating powers of 10, 10, 100, 1,000, 10,000, so on. Well, let me assume that my omega n value is between 100 and 1,000, a, and a um, omega n being the square root of B3 here. Uh, I don't really have to worry about the zeta term in doing this approximate graph. It does play a role if I'm trying to uh, graph this uh, exactly, but in this approximation, um, that magnitude response for that second order term is zero for frequencies less than omega n. So let me lay off a vertical axis here. And then uh, this would be a decade above you know, that same equal, dis equal distance. But now I go up at a rate of 40 dB for, for every decade. And so this line would continue this way. And you know, two decades above, I would actually be at, at 80 dB. So this actually has, the second order term has a 40 dB per decade slope. Okay. The actual gain at omega equal to omega n in this approximate myth method um, is uh, shown as zero. Remember, for uh, the first order term, it was actually 3 dB. So only the zero is not accurate here. It, it depends on zeta. The gain there is actually 20 log of 2 times zeta, 2 times that uh, damping factor. In your textbook, um, look at figure 4.41a. And he, sh he shows the actual gain at omega equal to omega n for different zeta values for a pole term. So now that we've looked at these individual terms, um, uh, let's look at how we combine them to, to get a graph of the magnitude response in, in decibels. And we'll do that in the next video where we'll work through an actual example.